our catechism to uh, question 36. Question 36, and last time, two weeks ago, we looked at the benefits uh, which uh, in this life do accompany our flow from justification, adoption, and sanctification. And now this evening, or this week, we consider the benefits that believers receive from Christ at their death. Uh, the answer to question 36, the souls of believers are at their death made perfect in holiness and do immediately pass into glory. And their bodies being still united to Christ do rest in their graves till the resurrection. Uh, over the history of the church there's been the, the heresy of soul sleep and uh, this is something that the scripture rejects and we do believe in the intermediate state which is uh, simply put that state whereby uh, our souls or our spirits are in glory and wait for the day of resurrection uh, to come. First of all the souls of believers are at their death made perfect in holiness and we also see that this rejects another heresy which is the idea of perfection uh, in this world uh, that is something that will only happen in glory at the point of death Hebrews chapter 12 verse 23 it's that passage where it, it tells us those that we've uh, come to and it says that the spirits of just men made perfect. What an anticipation for us as the children of God. There's a day when we are going to stand perfect in the sight of Jesus Christ. We will see him and we will be like him. What an anticipation we have as the people of God. The very things that cause us grief our sin, all the weaknesses of the flesh will be gone at that point. Mm -hmm. Secondly, and do immediately pass into glory. And therefore we read in Philippians 1 verse 23, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ. Paul was not saying he desired to go into the grave and stay there for as long as the intermediate state would last. No, his knowledge and again it says it then the next verse 2nd Corinthians 5 6 we are confident I say and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord he's not saying absent from the body and then uh, not existing but to be present with the Lord and then the promise of the Lord Jesus to the thief on the cross today shalt thou be with me in paradise and we're reminded of what lengths some religions will go to to deny these truths in the jehovah's witness bible um, they've changed it to the idea i tell you today you will be with me in paradise changing the emphasis but that is not what the lord jesus christ said he said today shalt thou be with me in paradise and then thirdly and their bodies being still united uh, to Christ therefore we read in uh, 1 Thessalonians 4:14, 4, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him our bodies are united to Christ but they are waiting for that day of general resurrection and then fourthly, do rest in their graves. Isaiah 57 verse 2, he shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds. Lovely um, uh, reference there. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. Uh, we as believers, uh, according to the words of the Lord Jesus, uh, we who live and believe in him, shall never die so therefore death itself or bodily death if you like is just called a resting it's a resting till that time when the Lord Jesus Christ will literally wake us up from the graves and then finally till the resurrection jo Job 
19 verse 26 and though after my skin worms destroy this body yet in my flesh shall I see God and I think there's a, an emphasis here it, the intermediate state will be a wonderful experience but nothing to the experience of the day of resurrection when we body and spirit body and soul will stand complete in the presence of God when Christ's redemption shall be fully realized in the bodily resurrection of his people so what benefits do believers receive from Christ at their death the souls of believers are at their death made perfect in holiness and do immediately pass into glory and their bodies being still united to Christ do rest in their graves till the resurrection 